Irish Catholic family, South Side. Single grandma, six kids, 25, no, 24 grandkids. I'm the youngest. It was uncle who lived with and cared for grandma in her South Side home, the house he grew up in. I coined him as my fun uncle because he let us call him by his first name. He was the only one who didn't have kids. And since he always lived with grandma, I saw him often. Finish your oatmeal or you'll blow away walking to school, grandma would say. In the afternoons, we'd match socks and watch CSI. And on good days, there were cookies involved. Then grandma helped me with homework. She would take the pencil out of my left hand and put it in my right. That happened a lot. She's not been with us for many years. Uncle still lives in her house, the house he grew up in. And I used to write with my left hand. My voice seemed irrelevant until my wrists got in the way. In the laundry room, in fourth grade, in excitement, I told dad about my day. My emotion? My intention. Lost. Lost because this took its place. This awareness. Awareness that my wrists were as excited as me. I suppose they were as nimble as me, maybe as happy as me. As I look at his fingers wrapped around my arm, far from my hand, far from me, he gripped. As dad knew it, I did not. He gripped. As dad put it, it wasn't for me. He gripped. When I looked, he released. I shook with the beating masculinities that filled his throat and closed mine, thinking, oh, all Kids, right. Dad and I have something to tell you. Cousin is dead. Cousin was drinking when it happened. Cousin committed suicide. That happened a lot. I'm the youngest. You didn't know he was gay? No one told me. That's like why he did it. Hey, I know you were like 17 years older than me and we didn't quite know each other, but I hope you're doing well. You were close with uncle, right? That's what mom said. Uncle says you were authentic. You lived in Orlando? Did you ever go to Pulse? I couldn't stop thinking about you when that happened. I hope you went there. They're supposed to have good drag. Last I saw you, I was going into seventh grade. Did you know about me? I didn't. Not completely. I think I met your partner, but he was introduced as a friend, so I'm not sure. I just wanted to say I don't blame you for what you did. I worry people blame you, but I don't blame you. I get it. I think we would have been friends. You know, I hate it when people say things like suicide is the most selfish thing you can do. How is it? How? They just think that because they don't get something. They don't get to have you. Suicide is selfish. They never told grandma you killed yourself. They never told me you were- Kids, Dad and I have something to tell you. Before we do, we want you all to be honest with us. I need you to be honest, okay? Has Uncle ever touched any of you? Positive? Thank God. Last week, a relative of yours went to Uncle. He asked Uncle if he ever touched him. Uncle confessed to it. 
It was 20 years ago. Uncle was 40, he was 17. It was only touching. They were drinking, I don't know why. Uncle also told us he was molested by a priest when he was a kid. He never said anything. He didn't think it mattered. The priest had already died in jail. Relatives cut Uncle out. It seemed a matter of time before Mother would sit us down to say Uncle took his life. So I called him. I want you to know I don't think any differently about you. That's what I said. A month later, Uncle left me a message. Hey, did you see anything about a murder downtown? I saw it on the news and I knew the person, just seeing if you saw anything. I looked up the story. The victim was my age, slashed with a box cutter. Witnesses heard homophobic slurs. It was a hate crime. Uncle didn't mention that. It's been six months now and Uncle hasn't committed suicide. But he doesn't say much. No one really does. I'm still the only one who wants to talk about it. Father stopped going to church. In June, I went to Uncle's lake house, where my family had all our vacations. The basement is covered in photos of uncles, aunts, and cousins. <laughs> they reek of the early 2000s. Cousin is on the wall a lot. When I came up from the water, Uncle said, you remind me of cousin. I didn't respond. What did he mean? Is it because we're bald? Is it because we're queer? I wondered about his relationship with cousin and that boy who was murdered. What was that? I can't tell. And I don't think he can tell either. You know, I regret telling uncle I don't feel differently because I do. When we first spoke, he told me he should have denied it. Denied attacking him. That's pathetic. I see my handwriting now and wonder how it might be different. That is, if grandma allowed left-handedness. Would it be cleaner or curvier, sharp or small? Would it speak differently? Lefties pull their hand towards them. Righties push away. Gather in. Release out. It's been really hard for me to release. I do curve my arm around the page like a lefty, which doesn't make sense because then my arm drags over all my words. When I use a pencil, I look like the Tin Man. My arm is so dusted with lead. It's a Christian myth that left-handed people are the sign of the devil. I don't think that's why grandma taught me to write writing. I just think she was right-handed, so it was easier for her to show me how to be like her. Maybe one day, I'll remaster the sinister side. For now, uncle still lives in grandma's house, the house he grew up in. And I'm still writing with my right hand. Thank you.